Hey guys, welcome to the Bows. So today I'll be looking at UFC 269 and the fighters that I think are good picks for this fight card given the odds. So the first one I'm looking at is Augusto Sakai versus Tai Tuavasa. Right now it's at even money. It's a 50-50 fight on paper, minus 115, minus 115 for both. And I think there's good value on Sakai. Sakai is the better overall fighter, the more technical striker, and he's the bigger, longer fighter as well. Probably a little quicker as well, so I'd give an edge to him. Tai Tuavasa always has that power so he could put someone out, but I still like the value on Augusto Sakai at minus 115. He's the better fighter, he should get it done as long as he doesn't get clipped. The next fight is Pedro Munoz versus Dominic Cruz. This, again, with the odds, is a 50-50 fight. Minus 115 for Pedro Munoz, minus 115 for Dominic Cruz. And I think it's going to be hard for Munoz to land on Dominic Cruz. It's going to be hard for him to find Dominic Cruz if Cruz is on that night. If Cruz is on, I think Pedro has a hard time finding him. Pedro had a tough time landing on Aldo, and Cruz uses a lot more footwork and is a lot more elusive. So I think it's going to be very hard for him to find Dominic Cruz if Dominic Cruz comes into this fight healthy and is on point. Dominic Cruz is also the longer and taller fighter, and he usually uses advantages where he has them. Dominic Cruz is a very smart fighter, and Pedro is there to be hit at times, and I think Dominic could pepper him with shots throughout the fight. Maybe bet on Cruz by decision, that's probably the best bet because Pedro is very, very hard to put away, and Dominic Cruz doesn't have a high finish rate relative to other fighters, so I think that's the best bet to make if not betting on the minus 115 on Dominic Cruz, then bet on Dominic Cruz to win by decision. Your odds may be even better. The next fight I'm looking at is Randy Costa versus Tony Kelly. Randy Costa is a minus 185 favorite, and Tony Kelly is a plus 155 underdog. And I like Randy Costa in this fight. Obviously, I wouldn't bet Costa on the straight money line, putting down, you know, 185 to win 100, but I would work him into a parlay with another fighter. And I think that other fighter is a fighter I'm going to be talking about later. So I'll get into that later. And I just like Randy Costa. I think he's a really good fighter. I think he's going to be a top guy in a few years. He showed a really good jab against Yanez, but Yanez is a beast and was able to come back. And he had the superior striking overall, Yanez, once he was able to find the openings. But still, Randy Costa was able to outscore Yanez in that first round and land a heavy jab. I think Randy Costa is going to be really good. He showed moments of greatness a few times now. And I think he's going to be really good in the future. Also, Tony Kelly hasn't been that active lately. I think he fought twice in 2020 and hasn't fought yet in 2021. I don't love that. Randy Costa has been fairly active as well. So I just like Randy Costa in this matchup. Parlay him with someone else and I think it's a good bet. The next fight is Priscilla Cachoeira, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, versus Jillian Robertson. Cachoeira is a fairly good striker. She has a lot of openings and she does get hit a lot. But Jillian Robertson is a grappler. She doesn't have very developed striking. Jillian's going to want to get the fight to the ground and try and submit Cachoeira. And Priscilla Cachoeira is a plus 275 dog. Jillian is a minus 350. And I think that's just way too much respect for Jillian right now. I think the fight should be a lot closer of a line. I'm not mad at Robertson being a favorite, but Priscilla shouldn't be that big of an underdog either. I think there's good value on Priscilla. She's got heavy hands. She's knocked out the last two opponents she's fought. Jillian Robertson isn't great at striking, and it's going to be dependent on her to get the fight to the ground. And she's not amazing at that. She's got great grappling when she gets it there, but she's not amazing at always getting it there. I kind of like the odds on Priscilla at plus 275, just straight money line. I kind of like that. The next fight is Sean O'Malley versus Hallie and Paeva. And Paeva is a plus 245 underdog, and Sean O'Malley is a minus 305 favorite. I just think Sean O'Malley is going to be much more developed on the feet, much faster, much more athletic. And Paeva, I thought, lost to Kyler Phillips, who is also really fast and really athletic. But Sean is just a more polished striker, in my opinion, than Kyler Phillips and has a lot more power than Kyler Phillips. And I thought, again, I thought Kyler Phillips beat Paeva. And now Paeva is going into this fight with Sean O'Malley. I think Sean O'Malley gets it done. I think the best bet to make is Sean O'Malley by KO. And I'm pretty certain of that one. I think it's a pretty good bet. Paeva is tough though, so maybe working in Sean O'Malley into a parlay would make more sense, but we'll see. I think O'Malley's going to find the finish. I'll probably lean towards that bet being the better bet than working in O'Malley into a parlay. The next fight is Cody Garbrandt versus Kai Kara France, and Cody Garbrandt is a minus 135 favorite, and Kara France is a plus 105 underdog. I like Cody in this matchup. It'll be his flyweight debut. He's got the shorter reach, but he's going to be a lot bigger and taller than Kai Kara France. And that'll be an interesting thing to see because Cody's usually the smaller guy in his matchups when he's fighting dudes. And of course, Cody hits very hard. He's super fast and super athletic. My only concern is the weight cut. I want to see how he looks at weigh-in. So probably won't be betting on this fight until after I see Cody Garbrandt weigh-in and see how he looks. 
If he looks horribly drained, I'll probably stay away. If he looks all right, I like that bet. Personally, I think he's going to be all right. He wasn't a particularly big bantamweight before, and when he was fighting at bantamweight, his walk around weight was pretty low in between fights. He's not that big of a guy. I don't think the cut will be overly difficult for him and overly affect his performance. I like him in this matchup. He's going to be faster, I think, more athletic, definitely more power, and he's a pretty good boxer. Sometimes he gets hit too much, but that's going to be skewed if you look at his stats because he threw his game plan out the window in those two TJ fights and also in that Pedro Munoz fight, and he did get hit with a jab and get pieced up in the Rob Font fight. But besides that, he usually looks pretty good with his boxing and his boxing defense, especially now that he's with the new coaching and stuff. He's looked better. The last one I'll be looking at is Juliana Pena versus Amanda Nunes. So Amanda Nunes is upwards of a minus 800 favorite, so there's no money to be made there if you're betting on Amanda Nunes, straight money line. Maybe you could bet on her to get the finish, uh, either a knockout or a submission. That may be a good bet as well. But I also like the under one and a half. I think that's a pretty good bet at minus 110. Given how many first round finishes Nunes has had, the power and the skill set, I don't think the under one and a half rounds at minus 110 is unrealistic. Pena is tough, she can grapple, and her striking is getting better, but obviously not on the level of Nunes. I actually wouldn't be surprised to see Nunes get an early submission off of a takedown. And I like the under, I think it's a good bet. The over isn't bad too, uh, over one and a half rounds at minus 120. But I actually like the under better. Obviously, you'll get more for your money with the under if it comes through. But also, if you look at Amanda in the past, she finishes a lot of her opponents in the first round. And I think she's going to be extra inspired for this fight, given that Pena's been talking a little bit of trash in the media, saying that she's been ducking her and stuff. I think Amanda's going to come really ready, and she's going to get the early finish. All right, guys, that's all I got today. Leave a like, subscribe, and let me know what you think about these fights coming up. Are there any ones I have missed? Are they the ones you think that are going the opposite of the way that I picked? Let me know. All right, till next time, peace.